Welcome back everybody to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is number 11, For Loops. For loop structure is very similar to if and switch, but what goes in the parentheses is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to break it down into three different parts. Part one is we need to declare a loop variable. This is usually used to keep track of where we are in the loop. Part two, we need to define a condition on how the loop will execute and stop depending on our loop variable. And part three, we need to update our loop variable, which happens at the end of every loop execution. I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not that bad. So let's follow our steps. Part one, we're going to declare a loop variable. So I'm going to say int i equals zero. And now every part has to be separated by a semicolon. So I'm going to put a semicolon there. Next, we need to define our condition on how it will run and stop. So we will say this loop should run while i is less than five semicolon and now we need to update our loop variable so every time the loop ends what we want to do is increment with our operator i if you've never seen a for loop before this probably looks super complicated but it's really not that bad and i think the best way to show you is to show you so let's put a right line in here and write our i and run it now let's compare what we got to what our loop says. So we started off our i at zero. We call this i commonly because it stands for index, and the index lets you know where you are in your loop iterations. So every time a loop runs, that's called an iteration, and then we have an index to let us know what iteration we're on. Now every time we get done with an iteration, we're going to increment i so that i goes up. That's why you're seeing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we run the first one at 0. We console write line 0. Our loop execution finishes. i increments to 1. And then we print it again. And then it increments to 2. And then we print it again. Well, we got to 4 and we printed 4. Then it incremented to 5. And we came up here and we checked our condition. And 5 was not less than 5. So we broke out of our loop and we stopped. So let's recap this one more time. We set a loop variable and this only sets one time at the beginning of the for loop. Then every time the for loop executes, we make sure we can go into our code block. If we can, we run our code. At the end of the run, which is an iteration, we do something to i and then we start over. Check the condition. If we can enter, we enter. When we're done, we do this. When you create a for loop and define these parts, you need to be careful that you define a scenario that can end because we're starting at zero. We're making sure we're less than five and we're going up. We know that's only going to run zero, one, two, three, four. But what happens if we said start at zero, go till i is less than five, but go down one? So now we're going to go 0, negative 1, negative 2. i is always going to be less than 5. So what we've just done is we have created an infinite loop that's going to just keep writing more and more negative i's as fast as our processor can do it. Now all of these operations can be changed. So say we wanted to start i at 10, we want it to go down to zero. So we would say we make sure i is greater than or equal to zero, so it can be zero. And then maybe we want to do i minus equals two. So now what we're saying is we want to start at 10. We want to go down to including zero. And every time we want to go down by two. So that means we're going to print all of the even numbers starting at 10, going to zero. 
So you can see how that could be useful for specific counting as well. So that wraps up the very basics of a for loop, but we are going to dive much deeper into a for loop during the next video, which is arrays. Thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Hopefully this is helpful. Happy coding, and until next time, take care.